All right, welcome to take two of the book scoop. Um, we were absolutely brilliant last week. We'll see if we can uh, endeavor to re repeat, repeat some of it. Repeat some of it. Um, I'm Priscilla. I'm going to talk about a picture book and um, a adult nonfiction book. I'm Sarah, and I have a young adult fiction. And I'm March, and I have a children's picture book. So um, I'm going to start with. The Christmas Book Flood by Emily Kilgore, and the pictures are by Kitty Moss. And um, this is a book about my favorite holiday of all time. It's the Icelandic holiday, which I think is remotely pronounced Yulebukkaflud, which means the Christmas Book Flood. So um, this book uh, tells kind of what the story is about. Uh, the Christmas Book Flood. In Iceland, uh, most books are published in November and December and given as gifts. And then on Christmas Day, Christmas Eve, everyone opens their gifts, gets their books, and then they spend Christmas that night and Christmas Day reading, um, drinking hot chocolate, eating chocolate. Best holiday ever, <laughs> right? right? And this book has the most beautiful pictures. And at the end, it tells you a little bit about the history and so if you want to start this tradition for yourself, perfect book to get this Christmas and uh, learn about it. Mm -hmm. um, the other book I have is an adult nonfiction called Purple Crayons, The Art of Drawing a Life by Ross Ellen Horn. And if this cover looks familiar, it's because this is a philosophical discussion of the children's book, Harold and the Purple Crayon um, by Crockett Johnson. And so two things, perfect to read together. Um, it, but this book, very good, but, and, and I picked it because it was short, <laughs> and I thought I'd get through it really fast, but it's dense. It requires a lot of thought. That said, um, it's a really meaningful book to read. He, he took, looks at the story of Harold and the Purple Crayon. He uh, goes through it frame by frame, and talks about the psychology, the philosophy, the sociology behind it, and really what it means to all of us to live as unique human beings, living the original life we've been given to live and doing the most with it. It's really a powerful book, and it has one of the best chapters on hope I've read in a long time. So I, a hard read in some ways, takes a lot of thought, not quick, but a very important read. I would really encourage everybody to read Purple Crayons, The Art of Drawing a Life. And it gives a perfect opportunity to revisit Harold also. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> um, I read White Out and I said, you know, I'm gonna read something other than young adult fiction and children's fiction, but then I saw this and went, oh no, I'm gonna read this one. Um, this is by six um, black female authors and they are the who's who of young adult fiction right now. It's Danielle Clayton, Tiffany D. Jackson, Nick Stone, Angie Thomas, Ashley Woodfolk, and Nicola Yoon. Um, they collaborated for a book that came out about a year ago called Blackout, which was set in um, New York City in the summer and there was a blackout. Um, it's a romance. It's Each of these authors writes a different part of the story. This one, White Out, is set in Atlanta and they get like six inches of snow, which of course closes Atlanta if they get something like that. Um, and the two main characters are Stevie and Sola, two girls, and um, they're dating and they break up and Stevie is trying to win Sola back. Um, and so it's their story, but we meet several other characters throughout the book, um, couples, friends, um, friends to lovers, all different types of YA tropes that you would expect to be in a romance book. They're here. Um, and so it's very fascinating to read a book that's written by six different authors. Um, and I heard um, Danielle Clayton and Angie Thomas in an interview, and they were asking Danielle why, why this book? And she said her 16-year-old niece um, asked her, why are black girls never the main character in a romance book? And so she said, I have to write that book. Um, and then they asked, um, how do you decide who writes what part? And Andy Thomas said, Danielle is very bossy and she tells us what to write. Here's your trope, write your part. So, so that's what they did. Um, you know, it's a, it's a very typical 
romance in that you have um, what you expect in romance, but it's written by six different people. So everything's just a little bit different and you have lots of different stories, maybe more characters than would normally be in a romance because mm -hmm. they each have their own characters that they write. In the first book, um, it tells at the beginning of each chapter who wrote it. This one doesn't, I was very disappointed and then I got to the end and um, they give you clues as to who wrote it. So you have to look up who the rapper is and who the person is who likes to bake to figure out who wrote it. Um, so this is White Out and it's very good. You should give it a try. Great. Okay. I read I Don't Care. It's illustrated by Molly Idol and Joanna martinez Neal, and written by Julie Foliano. And it goes from I don't care to I really care a lot. <laughs> um, the words are very, it's a poem. Um, there's a very nice rhythm to it mm -hmm. when you, you know, um, uh, stick to the rhythm and don't get lost in the beautiful <laughs> images. <laughs> um, and uh, it's about two friends who apparently first had an argument and then kind of went, I don't care about you uh, and what you do. Um, and then at some point, and I had to reread it to find out, now where exactly does it turn? It was very nicely done. Um, so anybody who wants to read a book about friendship, this is a very nice one. Mm -hmm. And it made me realize once again that somehow it is not fair that illustrators are not mentioned at the same level <laughs> as authors are because without these pictures the book would definitely not be the same. Mm -hmm. um, that's mm -hmm. why I mentioned the illustrators first <laughs> and then who wrote it. So I don't care, it's here at the library and come and pick it up. Nice for adults too. I was just going to yes. say in the picture books and children's books and young adult is not just for that age group, that yes. adults can read all of those also. Yeah. And yes, and there's so much in it for adults, I think, whether it's a picture book or it's a young adult book, there's so much that even an adult can get something out of. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. A lot of times, you re is, like for picture books, the children see it as one thing, but you know, the simple, simple yeah. what's right in front of you, but as an adult reading it, you're like, oh. Yeah, there's <laughs> many layers in there that sometimes the kids don't get, but as mm -hmm. an adult, you mm -hmm. will get. I think, I think I always um, am reminded of what Madeline Langle said when somebody asked her, well, why did she re write for children as if implying that that was lesser than mm -hmm. writing for adults. And she said, well, if I have a story to tell that I think adults can't understand, I write it for children. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So I think, you know, if you're not reading children's books, you may be missing out on some of yeah. those things. Yeah, absolutely. And we have loads of pictures. So don't be afraid there's nothing left for the children. If yeah. Yes. Take yeah. home a few. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So there is. Hopefully, we actually recorded it. <laughs> yes. Um, the latest book scoop. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks.